Okay, time for the uh, re-recording for the Acheron guy. That's reasonably late because... Uh... What's the word? I'm not sure if ice offended. How, how, how long can I fly like this? Distractions, right? So, uh, we now have another character with Yu-Gi-Oh card description. Thankfully, they kind of simplified it a lot, so it's quite fine. To start off with, let's go through the abilities real quick. So, first of all, let's go for her technique, right? All right, here comes the first fucking Yu-Gi-Oh card. How do I explain Archeron's kit without confusing the fuck out of people? Because there's a bunch of terminology on Archeron kit. Let's fucking get them out of the way real quick, okay? So, Slash Dream is the stack you need for your Oath. Crimson Knot is the debuff you put on the enemy to do more damage with your oath. Quadri Valent Ascendance is your oath over stack. So instead of maximum of 9 stack, you can store 3 more. Your technique will one shot all common enemy and it doesn't consume a skill point if you don't hit anything. If you hit a boss with it, you do lightning damage equal to your attack to all enemy and reduce all their toughness break, right? And you also gain the quadrivalent ascendance effect, which is after using your ultimate, Acheron gains one charge of her ult again and inflict one debuff on a random enemy. So this is once again the overcharge stack, right? Say in razor language uh okay razor language description press e kill stuff e doesn't kill big stuff but e makes big stuff die easier if you go to the acheron trial you can really see it right you can basically spam your e and it won't use any technique point until you hit something and after you hit something they will die right and then you use your skill point and then you get more skill point and you keep fucking slashing throw shit like this and instant kill everything right this works in sim universe because you can spam eat a certain funny item trick snack that recovers two technique point you see a bunch of enemy you go up here you cut them and then that's done right i think everyone knows this mechanic right they kind of really try to show this mechanic a lot and if you see you use your skill point then all you have to do is go up here and eat this right and then you get two more skill points you can basically do it infinitely you don't have to worry too much about like running low on the material for this because the crafting material for the trick snack these two get both of them just from assignment so you can craft like 25 a day and npc sells them 100 of each a day as well but normally you get 25 a day and i think that's fucking more than enough unless you're clearing the entire map every single day right i think the vending machine also sells it out of the way vending machine time it's only 10 but you don't really have to like buy the trick snack at all because honestly i feel like just fucking send the assignment you can craft 25 a day that's more than enough okay guys video uh yeah guys video this is important guys it's a how to fucking feed acheron snack let's go for the next part of her ability okay her basic attack is a basic attack you can like not level it it's fine leave it at zero your skill you gain one stack of slash dream and apply one deep of an enemy you do damage to single target and splash damage to surrounding enemy the damage ratio of this ability is quite low i think it's like kafka level of damage numbers or something but kafka has like the dot detonation and acheron has passive that allow her to get a lot of fucking free bonus stat because every five star character in this game needs to have at least eight or nine relic slot instead of six essentially right because they have so much bonus stat that's how they are balanced in this game what about well we don't talk about standard characters so next Next, uh, which one do I go for first? Which one do I want? Oh, which one do I have to fucking go for first? <laughs> I, I don't like this. Do I go for talent first? Can I explain them on razor terms? Yep, razor language. Okay. This is not razor term yet. I'm doing this first before razor term, right? Acheron likes collecting these stacks. You can think of Acheron like a playable lightning lord. She gets a stack whenever anything puts a debuff on something, right? If you put a debuff on it, enemy you get one stack if your ally put a debuff on the enemy you get a stack if the enemy explodes and shit on their own teammate you get a stack however you can only get one stack per action meaning even if you do 10 debuffs to 40 enemies that's still only one stack okay how do i explain this on razor term nine flowers equals oat debuff faster ult ult does big damage when enemy with flower stacks die stacks move on to enemy with the most flower 
Does, does, does that work? Too complicated? Summarize it more? Just use caveman ter terms. Enemy debuff equals a stack. Nine stack equal oath. Oath equals big damage. Yes. Okay, there we go. I lost you at debuff. Nine flower, old, old big damage, debuff, more flowers. There you go. There, are we happy? Are we happy? Is that razor terms enough? Debuff equals old stack. One stack per action. Nine stack equals old target unit with bigger number. Ma. <laughs> Explain it in battle so there's visual representation. It's not even complicated. You guys are trolling me, right? This is six flower stack. At nine flower stack, you do big damage. When you put a debuff on the enemy, you get a flower More stack. Business, eh? Hit the enemy with most crimson nuts or bigger PP damage. Okay, there you go. So if you put a debuff, you apply flower petal. And if you know, Sampo can apply up to five to six stack of debuff on his skill and up to three stack of debuff on his basic attack, right? But it doesn't matter if you apply multiple debuff, you only get one stack per skill, per action, basically. <laughs> Right? Even if you break the enemy, that also count as one stack because it's one stack per action, yeah? And if you what have you nine for? stack, you can press your ult, right? I charge extra. And your ultimate just does big damage. You see the ult is, is over there, right? Okay, so your skill gives you one slash dream. So one stack of your ult and apply one debuff on the enemy. So uh, <laughs> this debuff stacks up to three. If the enemy have three debuff, your ult does more damage. If enemy has crimson nut, they take more damage. That's the TLDR of it, right? Your ult has a funny description. So they have the Rain Blade, which is the three normal slash, and the Stygian Research is when you put your sword back, right? They wanted the player base to not do math, so what they did is they put the damage ratio up here. You can do up to this amount of damage and up to that amount of damage, right? Your first three slash is called Rain Blade that does more damage, the more Crimson Nut the enemy has. Up to three, right? It removes all the Crimson some nut and do more damage to our enemy, right? And then your final slash this is a full AOE hit and remove all crimson nut. Is that fine? Crimson what? Crimson nuts. Bro, her kid is not annoying. I think my chat is just trolling me, trying to make me say everything in Razor language. Like, this is nuts. just a... This is just a lot of mechanics. I lost you at debuff this, debuff that, or you know what? Fuck this. You guys understand what I'm trying to say. All right. So if you have like nine flower stack, you can I press your ult, right? And when you press your ult, you can see the amount of stack on the enemy, right? This guy has nine stacks of crimson nut, right? If you hit an enemy with crimson nut, you remove up to three stack and does AOE damage to everything around, right? So the two doggo took damage. But if I were to hit this guy without crimson nut stack, it doesn't AOE. It only single target. The last hit is a full AOE guarantee. Seems good. Whenever the doggo explodes, you can see the doggo explode there. I got one stack from the doggo exploding. Yeah. Destined for oblivion. Just so Acheron there got two stack because of uh, her light cone. Because her skill gives you one stack by default and her light cone puts another funny debuff on the enemy. I guess her skill also has a debuff, but for some reason it only gives you two stack, not three, right? So it's only one, right? You also get two stack if you skill and weakness break. Yeah, because weakness break also applies a shock debuff, which technically counts as a debuff. If I press E, even though I hit so many times, it only is one stack. Hello. Uh, no stack. This is a bunch of enemy, right? Nut doesn't count as a debuff, also XD. Nut, wait, the nut debuff doesn't count as a debuff? Is it considered other effect? It's other effect. Nut is considered other effect, so it's not a debuff. So you need her light cone to apply two stack per turn. So it's similar to Hanya stuff, right? It's not a debuff. Okay, chat. It's time to ban you, right? Oh, wow. She removes everyone else on her team and she's only here. Her nut is the Wow, her nut. Her light code is the one that applies a debuff called Mirage Fizzle. And this counts as a debuff. So you kind of need her light code to get two stacks of your flower ult per turn. And if you have E2, then you get three stack, right? But that's for later. And hitting enemy with AoE, you get more of those stack, right? Enemy explode. If enemy explode, you do get a stack because that explosion gives the enemy themselves a debuff, right? Destined for oblivion. 
Seems good. All right, let's talk about the other traces. Your first traces, when battle start, you immediately start with five flower stack and put five crimson nut on random enemy. When your flower stack has reached its limit, every over stack, you can over stack them up to three times. So instead of nine stack, you can technically hold 12 stack. I suppose the extra stack you hold can apply a random crimson nut on an enemy after you ult. So over stacking has a funny mechanic. Second is the abyss. When there are two or more nihility character other than Acheron in the team, Acheron basic attack skill and ultimate damage increase to 115 or 160 of the original damage modifier. Basically, if you have three nihility character on the team, you get a 1.6 damage modifier. And if you have two, then it's 1.15, right? This passive makes it so that everyone tries their best to force a triple nihility team to run with Acheron, which isn't a bad thing. But if you have like a random harmony character that can buff other stat, it kind of works fine as well. Obviously for min maxi, you want this passive to be activated in the maximum amount essentially. And that's why her fucking Eidolon is hilarious, but yeah. And your last passive is, this is the one we get free stat. Your ultimate does more damage. After you ult, you get 90% lightning damage for Three turns. So as long as you can ult once every three turns, you have a permanent 90% damage bonus. So it's just free stats, right? TLDR, not on everyone. Yeah, so is that all the mechanics? She gets 8% lightning damage, 24% crit damage, and like... 28% attack. A real question. Why does Horvus create a yapping skill explanation rather than one day buff equals one flower, one nut? So day buff equals nut head empty Kirby pla pla. I don't know why they have skill description in such a long way, but they like having fancy name for their stuff when they could summarize it more, but I guess it's cool, I suppose. Alright, that's all her traces, right? She gets 24 crit damage, 28% attack, and 8% lightning damage for free. They're all good bonus stat, right? Alright, let's talk about the fucking Eidolon because people were asking, right? Alright, so, first Eidolon. When you damage the buff enemy, you get 18 crit rate. Yeah, it's just a small amount of new stat, okay? And then E2 is... The amount of nihility characters required for your passive is is reduced by one and every single turn you gain one stack of your passive and put one debuff on the enemy you put the nut to the enemy with the highest stack and then e4 is enemy takes more damage from old old vulnerability and e6 is um ultimate ignores 20 percent more penetration for resistance so your ultimate will now ignore 40 percent resistance your skill basic attack is considered ultimate damage which means doesn't matter what element you are she can break your shield and because she has so much elemental penetration she basically is an all element character so if you're wailing here you go. The game was mostly been put the correct color against the correct element. But if you really want to ignore game element, Archeron is put one color on all fucking colors. So yeah, honestly, E2 is what a lot of people are going for because it allows you to guarantee a three turn ult or shorter. Because obviously you're going to have teammates with her, right? And three turn ult also maintain your damage stack permanently. So you get a permanent 90% damage up quite easily. You get three stack per turn. You apply more debuff. You get more ult stack, right? And that's pretty much it. And I guess more crit rate as well, right? Are you telling me that he's six? She will penetrate and then nut on you, huh? Yes. Next is Lycone. Woo! Lycone is easy, thankfully. Holy fuck. For four star option, you have good night sleep well. The more debuff enemy have, the more damage you deal. Basically, this gives you damage bonus. Technically, it doesn't benefit Acheron too much because she already gets a lot of damage bonus for free, but it's a four star option and you know, more damage bonus isn't necessarily bad unless you have like fucking 300 or something. I don't recall. The free to play Lycone. Is there anything else? There's no fucking three star option to use, right? Man, I can't stop nothing <laughs> increase where break effect by 20 percent when where does the ultimate yada yada it doesn't okay honestly you just use good night sleep well for four star and for five star you use her own light tone because it gives you crit damage gives you a guaranteed debuff that doesn't require effect hit rate and it gives you more damage and more damage on your own right 24 on all damage and 48 on oath so you have 90 percent from your passive 
8% from your traces and 48% from the light cones. You have 146% damage bonus if you have E0 plus the light cone. So you don't have to build elemental orb. You can build attack orb. For Mata, it's also okay. Yeah, it's 32% damage up. I guess that's a free option. Weld light cone. It gives you damage bonus to debuff enemy. But it also gives you effect hit rate, which is a wasted stat. And attack is okay stat, I guess. So you get 24% damage bonus and 24% attack with your skill only not with your ult at least it's a permanent one patient is all you need is technically okay because you do apply a debuff however this debuff requires you to have effect hit rate whereas this light cone doesn't require you to have effect hit rate it's a guaranteed debuff it's a rule breaker silver wolf light cone increase your effect hit rate and you get crit when you're hitting enemy with a debuff you also apply a debuff with a light cone but once again it requires effect hit rate and you don't really build that on acheron so yeah realistically it's either along the passing shore for five star good night sleep well for four star in the names of the world is fine that's why we just want a stat stick right seems good light cone is easy right the important thing is maybe light cone that your teammates will use right so light cone your teammate can use is probably resolution of pearls of sweat thingy right so if you have like hella or gunafan or any other debuffer you want to use with acheron with this light cone technically pella can like basic attack and apply debuff so Pella just have to spam basic attack to apply the funny defense down debuff which guarantees at least one stack per turn for Acheron without Pella needing to press her E so she can be a skill point generator right is she gonna work well with Adventurine Adventurine can put up shield and can apply a debuff with his light cone right I think you need the light cone though but yeah you basically have a guaranteed debuff ish right so I guess it kind of works a sustained character that can apply a debuff Gunaf and Acheron also works the sample also works with this light cone yeah essentially seems good that's the light cone done next is for fucking relic set they also added the new sim universe shit right the optimal set you probably want to run is no surprise this fucking set the pioneer set it increased damage dealt to debuff enemy by 12 percent increased crit rate by four percent the wearer deal more crit damage so enemy will two to three debuff after the wearer inflicts a debuff on the enemy the effect is increased by 100 percent lasting one turn now now, this is the shitty part, okay? The wearer has to inflict a debuff on the enemy to double the effect, right? However, as we've seen earlier, the Crimson Nut is not a debuff. It's a special effect. If you want to use that set to its fullest potential, then yes, you do need the fucking light cone. But if not, this effect only applies on your ult, which isn't bad. I think it's mainly because like, what, fucking 80% of her damage is on her ult or something? If you really think about it, if Crimson Knot was considered a debuff, you don't have to get E2. Acheron talent that reduce enemy toughness when you're in your ultimate state. This counts as a debuff, but Crimson Nut doesn't count as a debuff, so technically you do have the effects when you ult. So this set does work. Otherwise, if you want my honest fucking take, this set is a lot of stats, but if you're building a character and you just want to pick sub stats over set, fucking pick sub stats over set. I think that's just easier. You don't have to stress too much about having perfect set. You can start working on the set. You can start with two piece of this and maybe two piece attack. That also fucking works, right? Any other set for recommendation? If you run a lot of debuffer with multiple damage over time, effect this set is also fine because you can also ignore bonus defense so this is also fine other than that that's the only two right probably that's the only two if you really want to aim for it but ideally this one or you can run this one because wait defense ignores a rare fucking stat right four piece quantum ah uh, yes of course run four piece quantum on every character it works for orb and rope they also have the new set right the one where you have four percent more crit rate and up to 40 percent crit damage if you kill 10 enemies and the other set is the Pepsi set, right? Increase your attack by 12%. If there's another character that follows the same path as the wearer, increase your crit rate by 12%. You can use this set or you can use this set. Really doesn't matter. I think they're both fine. I guess for raw stat, you want to run the Pepsi set instead because it's fucking 12 crit rate, right? This set is good for double DPS and this set is good for ideally waves of enemy types content. Most bosses tend to spawn small enemies anyway, so that works. Other than that, Glamot set is always an option attack and damage bonus 135 speed is kind of easily achievable more attack if you have nothing else is also fine but running zero set bonus on orb and rope is fine don't worry this is my current acheron as you have guessed her set is rainbow her current stat is 3864 attack 135 speed 74.6 crit rate and 181.2 crit damage
no damage bonus, right? So uh, I'm using one copy of her light cone. The relic set is rainbow. Uh, these are the set pieces. We have uh, one roll into crit rate, three roll into crit damage, uh, two roll into speed, two rolls into crit rate. 5 rolls into speed with crit rate main stat, 3 rolls into crit rate, 1 roll into crit damage on attack boots, uh, 1 roll into crit rate, 3 rolls into crit damage, attack main stat, 2 rolls into speed, 1 roll to crit rate, 1 roll to crit damage on attack main stat. I get my funny attack number very high, I get decent speed, I get decent crit rate, crit damage. And because recently I've pulled a sparkle, I put her on the team like this, and she busts my crit damage by like 81%, 84% something, so that's uh, that, that's enough speed, right? And then I've been playing around with Gallagher, I don't know if I'm making a fucking Gallagher guide, but like, he's fun. I wish they fix his fucking AI a bit because this motherfucker never heals your teammate. It's worse than Lynx. He actually just waits until you're dying and then he goes like, hey, want a coca? And it's like, right? Like, it's weird, right? But he's there, I guess. And he goes, hoo-ha. <laughs> <laughs> The heal is bad. The heal is strong. He heals a lot. He just never fucking heals. So what guy I can do is this funny shit point. right here. Right? right? Yo, I'll kick your head. How will I kick your head? My friends? Yeah. For her. Gala? Okay. <laughs> Can I talk now? So Gala with his light cone is very hard to kill because he can just punch shit and heal himself for like his entire health bar, right? He's low? Fucking hell no. Oat again, right? And Gala also has free effect resistance up to like, what, 78 effect resistance for free? So he's immune to debuff, right? Because of his light cone, he keeps fucking healing himself. It's actually hilarious. He just doesn't die. Well, he's obviously gonna die if, if like, eight people attack him in a row, right? So, Gala is just a funny unit. I don't think he's super strong by any means. He's just rather a funny unit, okay? He's just hoo ha -ing. All right, anyways, it's time to do, like, MOC or something. Do not? What do you mean? Not in this video? No MOC on this video? Fuck, no showcase? No showcase? Mr. Editor, what the fuck? Okay, I'll end the recording. We'll do MOC next video. The recording has been 45 minutes. Editor is gonna die. Do not. <laughs> Holy... <laughs>